Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting functional equation. Well, this is a homemade equation because I came up with the problem myself, but these problems are very easy to come up with. Anyway, so we have f of x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3x equals x. And we're going to try to find the function f. We're going to try to find an expression for f of x, in other words, by doing some manipulations. I'll be presenting two methods. And the first one, I apologize in advance, is going to be a little bit painful. Not too painful, just a little bit. And it involves the cubic formula method. So it's kind of interesting. Uh, in many of the other videos, we use that formula, whatever you call it, like Cardano, Tartaglia, Ferrero. You know, some Italian guy who came up with the formula, it doesn't matter. But there is a cubic formula. Anyways. So let's go ahead and start with the first method. Our first method is going to involve the following. And this is kind of like a general method, I should say, that can be used uh, in many different situations. So let's go ahead and set the expression inside the parentheses equal to something. So I'm going to use substitution. So let's go ahead and set this equal to something. x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3x. How about calling it y? Okay. And you probably know why. Because we need to use substitution. So as is, this doesn't make much sense. But if you put y on the left-hand side, it just becomes a nice, not so nice, but anyways, a nice-ish cubic equation. All right. So how do you solve cubic equations? You get rid of the term with x squared. To get rid of the term with x squared, you have to replace x with something. And in this case, x must be replaced with z minus 1. Now, you can use y, you can use z, doesn't matter. I mean, I don't want to use y, obviously. Any variable will do, but why do I subtract 1 from z? Uh, this is where it comes from. Let me just quickly tell you. You take the coefficient of x squared and divide by negative 3. Why negative 3? Because it has to be negative. Why 3? Because it's the power, it's the degree. If so, if you had a quartic, you would divide by uh, negative 4. If you had a 4 there, of course. Or, um, anyways, <laughs> you get the idea, hopefully. So, 3 divided by negative 3. Okay. Let's go ahead and do it and see what happens. Replace everywhere. Normally, we would keep the y on the right-hand side if we're using the cubic formula, but that's okay. We can handle this. Let's go ahead and expand it. It looks more complicated, but when we do, things are going to simplify a great deal. So z cubed minus 3z squared plus 3z minus 1. And then notice that this is going to become z squared minus 2z plus 1. And I'm going to go ahead and multiply it by 3. So it's going to become 3z squared minus 6z plus 3. And then distribute that plus 3z minus 3 minus y equals 0. Awesome. Now notice that some of the terms cancel out. Actually, quite a few terms cancel out, so it's kind of nice. For example, uh, z squared cancels out. That should always cancel out because that's the goal. Uh, 3z plus 3z is 6z, and that cancels out with negative 6z, which is cool. And the 3 minus 3 is also 0. So that's really nice because now you get z cubed minus 1 minus y equals 0, which can be written as z cubed equals y plus 1. So that's really nice. Well, it doesn't happen most of the time. You will have some uh, residual terms like terms like z and constants, but in this case, it's an oversimplified situation. Anyways, z cubed is y minus y plus 1, but notice that uh, z can be written in terms of x. Because x is z minus 1, z can be written as x plus 1. And then we can go ahead and back substitute here. I mean here. So z is x plus 1. x plus 1 quantity cubed equals y plus 1. Now what is that supposed to mean? It means I can solve for x and that should be the goal. Cube root both sides. That's actually what I've been trying to do here by doing all these manipulations. And then subtract 1 and you got x in terms of y. So what is so good about it is remember, 
In our original problem, which was f of x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3x equals x, we had replaced this whole thing with y, and then we went about solving for x, and we did. So we can go ahead and now plug it in instead of x, but if you do it on the left-hand side, inside the parentheses, obviously that's going to turn into y because that's where we started, so you don't need to do that again, but if you do, you'll get it. Anyways, so this is becomes f of y equals x, which can be written as this, cube root of y plus 1 minus 1. This is really neat because we are supposed to find an expression for f, and we did, but if you wanted to write it uh, using an x, and don't for forget about all the other x's, it's not the same, but because these are dummy variables, we can basically replace any variable with anything we want. f of x can be written as the cube root of x plus 1 minus 1. And then that actually gives us the answer in terms of x. Let's go ahead and talk about the second method. The second method is going to be, it's like second method. Okay. So second method is going to involve uh, an algebraic manipulation, but in a much nicer way. And I know the first method is kind of like brute force and uh, what is it called? Um, beating a dead horse. Anyways, just taking too long. So here's what I'm, we're going to do. I'm going to call this something again, right? So I'm going to call this, uh, how about T this time? But this time I'm going to be smarter and turn it into something much faster. Uh, I'm not going to use the cubic formula because the left-hand side is almost a perfect cube. It's almost perfect. All you have to do is add 1. And when you do, and of course this is going to equal t again, right? But we're going to add 1 to both sides. And when we do, the left-hand side becomes a perfect cube, and that's perfect. So left-hand side becomes x plus 1 quantity cubed. And the right-hand side is just t plus 1. Now, solving for t is, I mean, did I say so? Okay, solving for x is much easier. Okay, I got to slow down, remind myself, slow down. Okay, x plus 1, if you cube root both sides, I kind of tend to rush, and then subtract 1 from both sides, and you're going to get the answer, uh, I mean, x in terms of t. That's not the end of the story because we have an x on the right-hand side, so we get to replace that with that. So going back to the original problem, we have x cubed plus 3x squared plus x equals x. Now replace the x, this, remember this was a t. Now replace the x with that, you're going to get f of t equals the cube root of t plus 1 minus 1. And this gives us f of x equals, again, forget about the previous x. And this gives us the answer in terms of x. In addition, I just want to show you a graph of the situation that you can be more convinced that these two functions are actually inverses. What are those? g of x is the expression that was given inside the parentheses, remember? And f of x is what we found at the end. And notice that if I draw the diagonal y equals x, they're going to be symmetrical. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.